Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I would say the last ones come to the round tables. There's free water, and we can uh, we can have an intimate discussion. Uh, I'm uh, honored to be here and to discuss something that uh, the ambassador was talking about: the ecosystem of the academic world, uh, the government, and the commercial sector. So uh, Professor Arkin already mentioned Mobili to be one of the examples. I know that Cherry Tomatoes took mo most of the uh, attention, but let's go back to Mobili a bit. Uh, so yes, uh, I'm going to talk about something that uh, everybody's fantasizing. Uh, I just met the gentleman of the Research uh, Institute. From startup to global, what can be an idea that everybody needs? And I'll add to the ecosystem that the ambassador was mentioning, uh, the government not only helping and assisting, but all re also being proactive, uh, if we'll take, the, again, the cherry tomato example, if it would be a superfood, maybe the government would say, OK, Let's subsidize uh, the price in half because I want the children in Greece to eat more cherry tomatoes. That's the ecosystem I'm going to show. So the two gentlemen which uh, I owe uh, and many people in the world uh, are Professor Amnon Chashua and his colleague that came from the business sector, Ziva Viram. Uh, that's about uh, 18 uh, years ago. It's not a typical startup. The typical startup is quick, looking for some giant to be bought, to make an exit, to become rich. Let's not downsize the, the morals of the startups people. They do want to affect the world. This is an example of a company who said, no, we don't want to be bought. They went public. Uh, and I will show it. So as Professor Arkin mentioned, it started all in the University of Jerusalem. The university has a, sp a specific uh, body called Yisum to make ideas applicable to the commercial sector. Mobili was one of them. And after a couple of years of testing algorithm software, the first buyer came. It was not a friend, a rich friend that said, okay, I'll be the first one to buy your product. It was BMW uh, and Volvo. So the vision they had, those two guys, was going global from day one. And if anyone here in the room is thinking of some idea, think global. Act local, but think global. This is the roadmap. Uh, Mobileye is uh, giving the world a solution for road safety. I know that there was a, in Greece a horrible accident just a couple of days ago and road safety is in your minds. And it's a world epidemic. Unfortunately, not only in Israel, not only in Greece, uh, people die out of accidents more than wars, more than almost anything else. And our solution is adopted by the car manufacturers uh, to assist the driver in preventing accidents. Let's see it in the movie. Uh, can I have it play? For more than a decade, Mobileye has been leading an ambitious and transformative vision to develop the most effective accident prevention system available using artificial vision. Operating one of the most innovative R&D centers, Mobileye has developed a revolutionary system based on their unique, award-winning technology. The system is compact and cost-effective, bundling multiple applications into one single package. Much like the human eye, the Mobileye system is capable of performing driver scene interpretation, detecting and classifying different objects on the road, including other vehicles, pedestrians, cyclists, lane markings, traffic signs, executing automatic high beam control, and more. The system's capabilities provide life-saving warnings and sophisticated features, from automatic emergency braking to completely autonomous driving. 
with recent changes in safety legislation, advanced driver assistance systems are becoming a prerequisite for meeting the highest safety standard. A majority of the world's car manufacturers are already using Mobileye as a significant accident prevention measure, with many moving towards implementing the system as a standard fit. The system can also be retrofitted as an aftermarket system to existing vehicles as a complementary safety accessory. By installing Mobileye, private consumers and leading vehicle fleet providers around the world have benefited from a reduction in accidents and significant savings in operational costs. The automotive industry and millions of clients have proven that Mobileye's vision has become a reality. More and more drivers around the world are enjoying a smarter and safer driving experience. Mobileye, our vision, your safety. So, uh, Mobileye uh, became public, uh, public company since uh, three years ago. Uh, it's worth now $10 billion. I'm not saying that, oh wow, we're so good and so rich. I'm saying that, that in an innovative idea, when it's a good one, in the right timing, it grew well with support of the government. It took time. This is 15, 17 years ago. But eventually, there's no reason why a Greek idea will not affect the world. You did it in the Olympics once, you can do it again. Those are all the car manufacturers that are using our technology. So it's well validated by uh, the car manufacturers. 17 million cars have a technology like a co-pilot helping them, their drivers, to avoid accidents. And the number is growing. Who else is looking into it? The governments. I'm having a meeting today uh, with the Ministry of Transport to discuss models done in the world, in the EU, in Israel, and implementing it in Greece. So there are regulations, and the manufacturers are looking towards the end of the decade into autonomous driving, which is already worked upon today. Let's talk a little bit about autonomous driving. I knew the minute I would say autonomous driving, you would not listen to anything else I'm saying, so let's look at it for a moment. Autonomous driving is, will be presented. Sorry for the translator. Sorry. Autonomous driving is uh, something that will be presented commercially to the public in 2021. We have already some examples of semi-autonomous, hands-free driving out of the city. I will show them. What is this challenge? What is this hype that everybody's talking about? And why is Mobileye so dominant and leading? There are three aspects for us to sit in a car which we will only control by saying, take me to my mother-in-law. Okay, that will never happen, but take me to my girlfriend. So sensing, we have two eyes and ears. So my teacher used to tell me, I have eyes in the back, I see you. She didn't have. The autonomous vehicle will have cameras, radars, lasers all around. Road experience management, mapping the world in the accuracy of 10 centimeters by crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing was mentioned today. We understand that, okay, a vehicle will be able to drive alone, but if there is a hole in the, in the road, the next vehicle should know about it. If there is an accident behind the corner, let's know about it now. All this needs to be known to one another. So you will see soon some big players in the world stating, okay, we'll do it. And this is one of the topics I'll discuss today uh, also with the Greek uh, ministerium. Driving policy may be the most complicated. To have cameras and computers to understand what is going on, on the road, I will show you in a minute. But how to teach an autonomous vehicle to enter the Etoile in Paris? This is mission impossible almost for humans. What do we teach children when we teach them to drive? One or two or three lessons for clutch and gear, and what is all the rest? 
negotiation with the traffic, how to blend inside. To do all that, we are working on that. And together with Intel company, VW, BMW, it will be ready by the end of the decade. This is the sensing. Our camera and system is able to detect where, this is the green, where can our autonomous vehicle drive if needed? Where are pedestrians? Where are street lights? Where are arrows on the road? Everything is detected and for decision making. So I mentioned BMW. This is only from last week. VW declared all the vehicles of VW as of next year will have the, our technology to support the creation of the world mapping in the accuracy of 10 centimeters. GPSs cannot do it. A GPS is one or two meters. You cannot have a, a map that swings. You need to know that a vehicle is in a lane near you. You are on your lane, 10 centimeters accuracy. Let's see our autonomous vehicle demonstrator in Jerusalem. You're invited to, to, to a test drive. Eight cameras all around. Let's see bypassing. It understands the lane is clear. It bypasses and returns. Let's see it from inside. That looks easy. Okay, the road was quite clear. Let's see what happens if somebody comes in front of you and does not drive your speed. The autonomous vehicle will go back to a safer distance. See, the red light was detected, the lanes are detected, and crossing cars. What happens if a pedestrian jumps in front of you? Automatic braking. You can see how the pedestrian was detected and the green was eliminated. Day and night. So it's happening today, but commercially and responsibly, it will be only by the end of the decade. So let's go from future to present. This is a problem we're committed to solve. This is also a very big problem. Having music in the ears, pedestrian going around irresponsibly. We don't want to hit them as drivers. We as citizens are used to blame the government, blame the infrastructure, but research show that it's us. We do the accidents. And it needs only two, three seconds of inattention uh, for any reason to have an accident. If I could have a spouse in the car, like a wife or husband, stating, watch out, watch out, watch out, and give only half a second alert before something may happen, half of the accident would be avoided. If I could give 1.5 seconds, most of the accident would be avoided. This is all under research. What is the solution? Not to put another person, to put a co-pilot, to put technology. Never tired, never drinking, never sleeping, never yawning, never sneezing. Eyes open, looking in front, understanding. AXA, the biggest insurer, one of the biggest, made the research on the system and found out that if you give a two-second alert, Theoretically, you eliminate accidents because of human reaction time that we need to break and car performance. Mobileye gives 2.5. Do we manage to eliminate all accidents in the world with our cars? No. Some people insist to die, unfortunately, and we saw it a couple of days ago. This is what our system does today, which is called 
ADAS Advanced Driver Assist. No driver replace, driver assist. The system recognizes the vehicles, chooses the more relevant one, sees the lanes, knows the speed, the distances, and can issue alerts if you're misbehaving. For example, if you depart from your lane unintentionally. We'll see an example. Pedestrians here in the room, maybe, God forbid, will have a little accident in our career as drivers. But we all promised ourselves never, ever to hit a pedestrian. This is a system that can help us. It detects all pedestrians, chooses which is relevant, and if in need, it will issue an alarm. So uh, which alarms uh, can we get? Danger of hitting pedestrian, street signs, the camera is reading the signs and the numbers, the distance of your vehicle in front, vehicle, bicycle, motorcycle, anti-accident, keep your lane, and even don't bite people in front of you. Let's see an example. Okay, such a beep, you don't think, okay, should I, should not, you just break. Let's see another example. Taken in Russia. I fell asleep. I fell asleep. What would if they would have mobile eye? Let's see. The system does not know if you're Israeli, Greek, or asleep. It will issue a warning. We as humans don't like those warnings, so we start to signal and keep our lane and not swing like crazy. Real life. There was an object on the road. This vehicle taking this picture continued this day met his children, his family, his work, and you can imagine how challenging it is when you are going 90 and suddenly there's something in the middle of the road and the car in front of you brakes. We are taught to be able to brake by ourselves, but we talk on the phone, we, I don't know. Professional drivers, we expect them to be perfect, but they're humans, and they may fall asleep. This one didn't fall asleep, but he was surprised. Damn. Sorry for the language. So who can use such a system? Practically anyone. Who is looking into it seriously? Fleets. I have here a nice local example, Coca-Cola Hellenic. Our, our biggest customer in Europe, uh, they decided to put the system in all their vehicles, all their sales vehicles, around 20,000 vehicles around Europe. Uh, and they didn't do it because of a nice presentation or nice videos. They made a test and checked what was the status before such a system was put in the vehicle and after. And there was a big reduction and they also saved a lot of fuel. Uh, why they save fuel? Because this driving style becomes more relaxed. You keep a better distance. You don't brake so much. You don't re-accelerate. Philip Morris in Ukraine, they had 200 accidents a year. Two years later, they have only 35. So I talked in my beginning, and the ambassador was talking about the government playing a game in this ecosystem of innovation. And I, was, I said I will show how the government can be proactive in closing the loop. So when you measure an accident on the government level, the national level, it's not only to fix the plastic and the metal. It's working days. It's national uh, security. It's hospitals. It's, it's so much. And the Israeli government said, you know what? Those systems appear. Let's, let's check them. They took the actuator of the insurer 
uh, of the government said, please check those systems. He did, and he found out 45% less claims. That car showed before did not call the insurance company. He didn't have any accident. So what did they do? They said, okay, let's invite the public to have upgraded safety system in their vehicles. When they buy a new vehicle, let's give them a tax incentive. We will pay for the system. You put the system. Safety in the road is better. 2014 was already the first year was this project was ongoing. Unfortunately, the statistics in Israel are not as good. Uh, we are a stressful country. We are Mediterraneans. For every 40,000 vehicles, we have 1,000 injured, 13 dead. Let's see what happened with the 40,000 vehicles that did install Mobileye. Half. Half dead, half injured. The government saved money. It lost money a little bit in the beginning by giving a tax incentive, but it got a return effect on the GDP. I will show a local example and slides. So actually, there is a, a profit here. OK, it's not comfortable to talk about money when you talk about lives. But on the national level, of course, budget is important. Awareness. Today, 30% of the vehicles in Israel are with such systems. Two years ago, 2013, it was almost zero. The insurers, the government told the insurers, you must give a discount. This is a vehicle that will have, by half, a chance to have an accident. Why should he pay like his neighbor? And now comes really, and I say that as a proud citizen, uh, the, ministry, the Minister of Transport in Israel. He said, if it's that good, why should I wait for the citizen to decide if he wants it, if he wants my tax incentive? Let's make it compulsory. So his people told him, relax. People need to chew your decisions. Let's start with the heavy vehicles, with the commercial. So as of November 1st, 2016, two months ago, all the heavy vehicles in Israel must have such a, uh, such a system. Of course, the regulation does not mention Mobileye, but we are a dominant provider of this regulation. The government did something else, scoring of safety. We had, until now, NCAP stars. If you have an accident, you may survive, more or less, by different vehicles. Why not talk about prevention? You will have less or more a chance at all to have the accident. We are used to those for CO2 emissions. I'm sure in Greece they're also shown when you buy a new car. The Israeli government, as of 1st of January, one month ago, decided to put this innovation as a standard. When you publish, public, uh, publicize a car to, for sale, you must tell the public it's active prevention technology. Let's see how it works. So below you see CO2 emissions. This is a Fiat. And above you see one, red, not the best scoring. Uh, this one is Nissan, Qashqai, blue, quite good. And this one went even one step further and said, I have Mobileye included. So this is from the newspaper. Uh, which one is this? Is he good? Yes, yeah, six, Suzuki. What about, what's the situation in Greece? Let's see. So Greece... Uh, loses a lot of money and lives, of course, uh, on GD uh, annually. This is by World Health Organization from 2015. 1.5% of your GDP is wasted on traffic accidents. I don't see anybody surprised here in the room. You all came with the traffic today, no trams. We can change that. If only 1% of the vehicles would have such systems, Millions would be saved. So let's go practical. If the government would give 100 euros per vehicle uh, from the government for 1%, that would be 80,000 vehicles. That would be 8 million euros. Quite a lot of money. Would it be returned? 
Yes, very much. The savings are already more than the investments. All the vehicles not involved in an accident continue to contribute to the GDP. They go to work, they pay taxes, they're not in a hospital. So taxes are paid more than would have. So actually, for 100 euros, you get back much more. Do we have more examples? Of course we do. The EU said heavy vehicles should have lane departure warning and automatic braking. Which vehicles? Ah, new ones only. What did the Ministry of Transport in Israel say? All of them. Austria, they went to a government pilot and said, okay, we'll, we have a problem with heavy vehicles inside cities. There are many projects, smart city, clean city, safe city, but the buses, the public transportation, the trash, we tell the public, go by foot, go by bicycle, and when cornering to the right, you run them over. So it's going on now. In Holland, with the academic world, the uh, TNO, they took 400 trucks as a test group, and they took 2,000 trucks and put mobile life. For one year, 77 million kilometers. They were expecting five accidents in the test group. They had it. They were expecting 13 to 11 to 13 accidents. They had zero collisions. The system is working. China government also, they made a pilot, good decrease in results. And finally, let's give some Hyundai some credit. Our technology embedded, don't try it at home. I believe actions speak louder than words. The challenge was to show these caring driver assist features in an exciting way. But you guys, it seems, are pretty hard to excite. Maybe the only way is to put our own lives on the line. Proof through jeopardy. So, here goes. Okay, we're up to speed. All drivers, turn on ASCC and the LKAS, please. I say don't try it at home. If we understand that in front of us is a vehicle, we understand the distance, we understand the lanes we can control. What do we have in Greece? Uh, we have the second biggest insurance company, uh, Euroalliance, uh, announcing very soon of a very dramatic and aggressive uh, program for its clients. Uh, as mentioned, uh, Coca-Cola Hellenic uh, is only an early bird out of uh, other fleets that are looking seriously into it. Uh, we have here a local respected company, Euromat, which is already in the field of automotive with fuel solutions and telematic solutions in the field, presenting us uh, very uh, respectfully. And hopefully today in the Ministry of Transport there will be discussions of how the government not only supporting new ideas but also making them being implemented in the country. 
Thank you very much uh, for listening. And please drive safely. <laughs>